Hi, I'm your host, Alan, and you're watching The Marathon Fuse, a show that brings you the Marathon Majors experience from different host cities. Stick around, because we have a great show for you today. On this episode, we get to experience beautiful Chicago on this marathon weekend. We'll get you up close and personal with the elite runners, share a meal at the Kenyan Cultural Dinner, and check out the Chicago African nightlife. Let's go. Good morning, and welcome to the Bank of America's Chicago Marathon. From humble local beginnings, to a world-class sporting event, now recognized as one of the World Marathon Majors. Sunday morning, participants from all 50 states and 115 countries will gather in Grant Park to celebrate individual commitment, sacrifice, and dedication. The marathon exemplifies what is great about Chicago. Partnership, teamwork, spirit, and pride. I'm here with uh, Mr. Kerry Pinkowski, and uh, what got you into this? Well, I've, I've, I come from a running background. As, okay. as, a, as a young boy, I ran cross country and track in uh -huh. Northwest Indiana, which is not far from here. Okay. Uh, I was fortunate enough to run at Villanova University, and then run uh, after I was done with college. I ran, I ran for Nike for a while and discovered road racing. So uh, I come from an athletic background, uh -huh. and I crossed over to the production side. So how many races did you win when you're running? I ran, I won a few. I haven't won any recently, <laughs> but that was years ago. I won some races. It's been a while. <laughs> All right, now. The race is from 1983, there's been a lot of dominance by the Kenyans. Sure. So, I mean, maybe you guys should call it uh, Bank of America, Chicago Marathon slash Kenya. I think we should maybe <laughs> open a branch of Bank of America in Kenya because the, uh, the athletes, the Kenyan athletes have dominated in Chicago. And why do you think that's so? I think there's a legacy okay. of, of success here. I mean, if you just back up from Moses Mosop, who set the course record last year, the great, great Samuel Samuel Wanjiru, Wanjiru. Yeah. Uh, Olympic champion, uh, two phenomenal races in Chicago. Uh, his race with Sagay Kabeda uh, two years ago was absolutely amazing. It, it, it was comparable to any sporting event we've seen in Chicago. If you think about the Bears and the Bulls and the Blackhawks, those two young men fighting, fighting, fighting really showed the spirit of what the Kenyan runners are about, the Ethiopian runners. So it became something that, that personified the event. I mean, Evans Rudo, Catherine Dereba, uh, all of the great champions that we've seen here. I believe, the people yeah, in Chicago. Uh, identify with the Kenyan athletes, they cheer for them, they look forward to see them flying down the streets of Chicago. Which one was your memorable moments out of all the races? Which one do you oh, think, like, wow? I, I would think one of the great races was Khalid Kanuchi's world record against Moses Tanui. Uh, okay. Fighting, 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 fighting. Moses took off, had a 30 second lead, and Khalid Kanuchi cut, cut, cut. Moses set the Kenyan record. That was an exciting race. Catherine Dereba's first world record here in Chicago was, yeah. was magnificent. Um, uh, Moses is Moses Mosop uh, last, last year. His course record last year in warm conditions was amazing, uh, and the fight with Wesley Career uh, at 23 miles, uh, just amazing, amazing. Yeah, I was actually looking forward to that fight this year, but it looks like it won't be happening because Moses is going to New York. Yes. yes, he had a bit of injury in training, so he needed a little more time to prepare. So we'll miss Moses this year, but Wesley's ready to go. I'm here in Chicago sitting uh, with the 2012 Tokyo Marathon winner and also contender for uh, the race, the Bank of America Chicago Marathon on Sunday, uh, Mr. Mikey Piego, welcome. Thanks. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yes. Excited about the race? Yeah. Are we going to win this or how, how do you see it? Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I think I think I'll do my best. How do you become an elite runner? I think best for the time. So what's your best time till today? 2648. 2648. And what's your target goal? What do you want to achieve? 25. 25. Uh, 25. Uh, uh, to run under 2600. That's my target on Saturday. What are some of the challenges you marathon runners face in regards to maybe traveling, training, and just life? Yeah, it's, um, it's challenging because uh, 
most of us we are, we are staying in a camp. You know, imagine you are not staying with your family because from Monday you are just outside. You have wife and kids, so it's challenging. Another thing again is uh, for the injuries. And, injuries? Uh, yeah. Why didn't we perform really well in the Olympics this year? Tell us why. Do you know why? No. You don't know why? No, I think the coaches and the officials can answer that. I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you for your time. Good luck on your race on Sunday. Thanks. All right, my, yeah. So last year, during the same exact time did the Chicago Marathon, you finished that place. Yeah. And also in Boston, a few months ago, you also finished that place. Yeah. Are you looking to make a difference in, uh, during this race? Yes, that's a quest, uh, good question. Uh, this year, according to my preparation, mm -hmm. I need that time to do something special because Chicago is where I run uh, keep my past 50 to 659. To see 59? Okay. Yeah, and but I believe that this year I'll do something special because I'm so prepared for it. And how does it feel running in a race with uh, Wesley Career and uh, Levi Matebo? Yeah, it's fine because if we have a strong athlete in the game, that's where we will we, we'll find a good result in it. If you perform well, the next race is automatically coming because all, all, you will be like in market. So all, all organizers say, oh, let this guy come to my race. And so it will be good if you run good in, in the race. That's good, Bernard. Yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. For the last 14 years, Kenyans in Chicago host a cultural dinner for the runners. In basketball, we have the likes of LeBron and Kobe Bryant, and in marathons, Kenyan top athletes have also achieved celebrity status globally. It's a time to celebrate our talents. It's a time to reflect what God has given us and how we are using it. Is it, are we only using it for ourselves or for others too? This evening, we have prepared food, and we'd like to have you have a good meal don't look left and right, we have enough food. <laughs> It was great for me to experience how inspiring the elite runners are to the rest of the world. We had a chance to catch up with the host of the dinner, Faith. Faith has organized dinners like this for the Kenya runners for the last 14 years, and she's done it out of her own heart. So tell us, how did you end up doing this from the beginning? Well, the guys were sitting in their hotel rooms and I went to pay a visit to them. So I told them, let's go home and let's cook Ugali, and they were happy and I I felt that this was a need that needed to be taken care of, so I started doing that every year. And you financed this whole thing by yourself for the last few years, right? Yeah, mostly. We started off as a potluck, but then because of legality issues, we had to also consider like, you know, what we need to do. But other than that, yeah, it's mostly come out of pocket, but it got to a point now where we had to find funding for it. Who are your sponsors this year? Team World Vision and Film Transcend with Wesley Coriel, they okay. sponsored us this year. Have you reached out to any companies in Kenya to, you know, to be sponsors for this? Not yet. I mean, I've tried. The embassy did support us too. They have been there for us and, you know, we're just trying to reach out to our own country people to come out and support our runners. Now, what's the reaction with the local, you know, Kenyan community here in Chicago? in regards to supporting the runners or even showing up for events like this? Well, they're supportive, they come out, you know, this is a big thing. You know, Kenya is put up on map all over, like, you know, Chicago Monday is all going to be Kenya. So this is a big event for them just to meet the runners and have a good time with them. The support you get from other people really kind of pushes you to do more for people. So okay. I really do appreciate it. Now, what do you think about the runners this year? Do you think uh, we're going to take a one, two, three Kenya win? Hey, you know what? We fed them well. Let's wait and see Sunday, guys. <laughs> Coach Drew Lucky, I'm the head women's coach at Oshkosh. He's, this is our team. We're enjoying our time and, and uh, enjoying meeting the, the top runners in the world. Now, quick question how for you guys. Are you guys inspired to start running marathons? or? <laughs> well, maybe someday. I want to start training for a marathon after I turn 30. All right. Have you ever had Kenyan food before? Uh, no, I have not, but it's very good, and I definitely uh, want to eat it again. <laughs> it was really good. Do you know the names of the different food, or you just ate it? No, I just ate it. just <laughs> kind of assumed that... Whatever, it tasted good, so. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for your time. Good luck. I hear you have a meet next week, right? All right, good luck, win. And send me the medals. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I would just like to say thanks for, uh, to the people of Chicago. You guys are so nice. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, we really feel good when you come here. We feel we feel that at home. So does this give you extra mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. feel like you're gonna extra win now? Motivation. Thank you extra very motivation. Much. Yeah. Coming up next, we experience the Chicago nightlife. Come and check it out. We want to see the night scene and I want to experience for myself and I want to show you how the nightlife in Chicago is. Marathon Fields, Chicago, Illinois. I'm here with Top Don and Mr. Paul. These are really big African promoters here. We are Club Central, right inside, crazy. I've never been to a club where they're playing constantly African music the whole night, upstairs and downstairs. How long have you guys been doing this for? In terms of doing Afro events, me and my partner uh, Aurelian, we've been doing this for eight years. So you get a whole bunch of different people coming together and the funny thing is it's really it's kind of getting more and more popular now in different cities you see, you see that happening but we we kind of had established that a while back and it's almost like we laid a prototype for bringing all africans together in one spot the, the idea has always been that it doesn't matter where you're from we get people who come in there just to celebrate our togetherness because aphrodisiac is about togetherness now what can you attribute this you know, explosion of African culture, African music crossing over. Now we're listening to new songs from P-Square, D-Bunge, and all the South African artists, you know. Yeah, like I said, good music is good music. What It just took a while to be able to spread across across boundaries. And with the event of the social media, definitely, I think that there is no boundaries anymore. It doesn't matter where you are, Nairobi, Yaoundé, Tokyo, the kids going to dress the same, talk the same, because they have this universal language. Do you attend the marathon? Well, absolutely. We, we, we're we going to be right there supporting Kenya all day. Brother, 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 brother. The other way, brother. There you go. He's an honorary Kenyan for one That's day. Right. Yeah, now you can take out the Cameroonian flag. That's right. No, tonight I'm all Kenyan, man. Done. It, it's going to be a tough race. We'll see what's going to happen. But I, I'm, I'm really hoping for Wesley to be able to at least get, get this notch under his belt. And then we go from there. You know, just pick up at least one through five for sure. And then the rest, we'll see how it goes. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your time. <laughs> Running a marathon takes a lot of endurance and determination, and different people run marathons for different causes. I had the opportunity to interact with Wesley here, and he's actually running this marathon for a bigger cause. You gonna adopt a turkey sandwich? Mm -hmm. Turkey bacon. Turkey bacon? Yeah. Turkey club. Yeah. So they're like foods you don't eat before you run? Uh, not, not really. Yeah. <laughs> you just eat anything? Yeah, it's a... Uh, so you can even go... Like, it depends on how long the race is before, okay. before the race. If it's very soon, like uh, from tomorrow now, you start watching what you eat. You don't eat too much cheese, you don't eat too much... Stay away dairy. from meat? Yeah, okay. stay away from meat, stay away from dairy. How about bananas? Potassium? Know, we, we eat a lot. A lot of bananas? Because, yeah. you know, you need electrolytes and you need potassium for your body. So what's your hydration period? How much water do you drink before a race? A lot. A lot? Uh, I, I start drinking like um, five days before my hydration starts, because that's when you, uh, your body starts getting used to that fluid level. You know, you okay. have to balance your fluid level. I think a mistake that some of us does is like you start the, the day before. Oh, okay. When you do that, your, your body is not really not used to it. enough water in your body. Like your, your cells are not hydrated enough. So where do you train normally? Everywhere. Honestly, yeah, everywhere. Honestly, everywhere. I train in Kenya uh, a couple of months, like two months a year. Uh -huh. Then I go to Canada for a couple of months. Uh, that's where is that wife, where you reside? That's where my wife comes from. Okay. So, and then I go to Kentucky where my coach is for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. So everywhere, yeah. It's a lot of work. I know, it's fun though. I'm enjoying it. Looks like you're having fun. Yeah. No, let, let, let me treat you today. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me treat you. Uh, I have this on YouTube. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thanks, thanks. And you are you are a real philanthropist. I like I like it. I'm lucky. That's so yeah. So we have the, the hospital. We have the uh, we have the kids that we're sponsoring to go to school, and then we have the farming project that we're doing too. Okay. So this summer we had doctors that came from America to uh, to, to work at the hospital. They came and helped out at the hospital, and uh, we had about it was about 20 students, and, and we they were able to see 3,500 people. Okay. and did about six uh, life-saving surgeries. Those are important things. Nice. And it has been really fun to just see that group. We do have a website, uh, it's called Kenyan Kids Foundation. www.kenyankidsfoundation.org. Oh. And if you go there, you will see the amazing things that God is doing. And I'm just happy that this is the process that has been. And so did you get to attend the Olympics or you watched the Olympics? I watched the Olympics. You watched the Olympics. So I have a question for you. You know where you're going with this one. <laughs> All right, Kenya has really poor performances this year. I mean, yeah. we'd been told we were guaranteed 12 gold medals, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, most of the athletes didn't show up. Yeah. And something a lot of the athletes were saying that the best athletes are sitting out the Olympics to concentrate on the marathons. Could you just enlighten us more on that? I really don't think they're sitting out. Okay. I, uh, I don't think if I'm the best elite, but I think if I was given a chance, I would have competed. But this, I think, uh, athletics is a very, a very unique thing. Okay. Running is a very different thing. You never know what's going to happen. I think the mistake that the official did was to hype the people up. I think we were hyped up so much. The country as a country okay. was hyped up that they're going to get 12 medals. So the expectation was expectation high. expectation was high. We did good. When you think about it, compared to Ethiopia, compared to other countries, we did better. Yes. Uh, but because our expectation was up here, we had already been put in a better store that we, we had put ourselves. So it really ruined up everything. But a lot of athletes, I think, they, they showed up. They, they tried their best, but the competition is getting tough. Tougher. And people have learned our tricks. That's one thing we need as a Kenyan to sit down as a country and figure out what are the new things. There's technology now. We need to involve technology. You know, when you think about Mo, Mufara, why is, why is Mufara becoming so good all of a sudden? It's not because, it's not because he can beat us, but it's because he came to America and he got the technology. Things are working different and we need to impress technology, we need to impress new techniques of training, we need to impress new techniques of doing things. So does this give you an opportunity to feel like, okay, I'm definitely going to win this race or do you still... I don't, I don't I, I, myself, I don't always say I'm definitely going to win this race because there's so many good people out there. You know, there's, and anything can happen. You have two hours and, you know, 26 miles of great running. But I think I've trained enough to put myself in a position to compete for that position. It's a sport and anything can happen in 26 miles. But if that's what God wants me to do, I think I'll put myself in a position to be used by God to succeed. Before the sunlight can even take a crack at the skyline, Chicago is already bursting to life with the magnitude of the people that are already here and from many different countries and diverse backgrounds. We are standing outside the beautiful Hilton Hotel right here on the famous Michigan Avenue. It's about half an hour before the race starts. It's Sunday morning. It's cold. It's about 30 degrees. If you see everyone around me, they're all bundled up. I have my jacket on right now, but my fingers are still freezing. Everyone is heading in the same direction. About 40,000 people will be participating in the Chicago Marathon. And you can feel the excitement in the air as it permeates every inch of the windy city. Finally, the elite runners join the masses. Their purpose for the finishing line sets them apart, while the code of endurance unifies them with the rest of the runners. Volunteers are a vital organ of this race. They are part of the community and represent the city by providing royal treatment to all the runners by fully supporting them. Just like the city is more than a sum of its parts, the Chicago Marathon 
is far more than the 40,000 people who compete in it each year. The tale of this great race would not be complete without the countless supporters who stand by the sidelines, spicing this event, going the extra mile to give that greatly needed boost of presence and humor to the runners. What arguably makes this marathon so special is the array of runners who partake in the race to raise funds for various non-profit organizations. I'm here with the Kenya Kids Foundation, Team Korea. Team Korea. You guys gotta check this out. So what's the Kenya Kids Foundation about? It is a foundation that uh, Wesley and his wife Tara formed uh, that helps co high school students uh, through their high school career and hopefully on to college. He helps sponsor the children uh, to pay for their school. We spent the summer over there with Wesley. All uh, of you guys went to Kenya? All of us. Yeah. Yeah. These are all medical students from the University of Louisville who went over there and helped open the hospital. And uh, we're here just to represent our brother. So you guys think Wesley's going to win today? Yeah. Kenyans have won this race nine times consecutively, and Moses Mosop currently holds the record for the Chicago Marathon. But like every race, the finish line determines the win. This is a rivalry rekindled between the Ethiopians and the Kenyans, and you get to watch it here. In 2010, Segaye Kebede duked it out with the late Kenyan Samuel Wanjiro, only to lose after a tightly contested race. But Kenyans seem to be the favorite for this race. Segaye not only wins, he also destroyed the course record held by the Kenyan's previous winner, Moses Mosop, by slashing almost a minute off in the 35th running of this race. What an upset. After all is said and done, the finish line determined the win. In the women's category, the close finish between Atsede Beisa and Rita Jepto led to the thrilling yet puzzling finish for our spectators. We came to find out that Beisa crossed the line just inches ahead of Jepto with a winning time of 2 hours, 22 minutes and 3 seconds, one second ahead of Jepto. In the true spirit of sportsmanship, Wesley Correa offered his candid review of the marathon after the upset. Uh -huh. <laughs> How was the race though? It was good. It was good? The last two miles, mm -hmm. I just a little bit lost focus mm -hmm. and they took off. So first Ethiopian. First Ethiopian man to win in Chicago, yeah. 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 Chicago. Kitwara hmm. did. Especially being his first marathon. First marathon. Yeah, I thought Kitwara was going to win that race. Now when you were running with the Ethiopians and you had three Ethiopians in front of you and no other Kenyans, I mean, what was going through your head at that time? Uh, those guys when we were at like seven kilometers. Uh -huh. They started talking at their language. They told her I cast at the number three, just a push. The marathon is no man's event. It, it can go anyway. Anyway. We, can, we are using blood so you can know somebody's body. Uh -huh. Today, your body is okay. Tomorrow, okay. Ethiopia took one, two, three, yeah. sitting out all the Kenyans. What was the technique? How did you get all those Kenyans back there? I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't know what they have been. You don't know? <laughs> don't you guys know. didn't come in with a strategy like, you know what, you know, we're going to run not, this way? Not always for Kenya. Not Sometimes always for... we have to share for Ethiopia, you know? True. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> True. So, I mean, what technique did you use to win this race? Was it just yeah, good there training? Is no, there is no special. Okay. It's just, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's your job, you know? Is this job? Yeah, this is our job, you know, which you do. If you did a good job, you show good results. Yeah, you won. Yeah, that one. <laughs> All right, congratulations on your race. Like this marathon, so is life. You win some and you lose some. But you keep on moving. Catch you on the next episode of Marathon Fever.